Did you notice our latest semi-automatic control panel design upgrade, which involve Ethernet controlled VFDs? In this episode, I will explain how to do the IO check for the best troubleshooting results, and I will also show the new signal mapping for each of the VFD terminals. Hi, I am Jean-Luc, Sales Marketing Coordinator. Welcome to this Step of the Day episode presented in collaboration with Duravent Lifecycle Services. For a number of good reasons, our standard Standard Plus and Deluxe control panels are now all equipped with the Micro 850 EPLC, which is specifically designed for in seamless Ethernet integration with the PowerFlex 525 VFDs. Here are some of the advantages. Saving on PLC troubleshooting and wiring circuits, standardized I.O. mapping and VFD parameters across our top three control panel options, advanced VFD diagnostic page on the HMI of the deluxe control panels. Okay, so this also means that we are now using terminals 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the VFDs to receive the component signals instead of connecting them to the main PLC. Now, because of that, you have to use a display parameter to check these uh, signal status. B014 is the display number to remember, and to get to it from the default display, you have to press the enter key twice. The blinking digit shows which one you can currently change. Use the select key to switch to the next digit, and uh, up down arrows to modify the value. You don't need to worry about the letter, it will self-assign with the parameter value being displayed. Once you can see B014, you can now press the enter key to access the parameter value. At this point, current signal status of terminal five, six, seven, and eight are now being displayed with each of the digits from right to left. A value of zero meaning absence of signal or zero volt, and one meaning 24 volt or presence of signal. By looking at these, you can now check if these component and circuits are good. VFD1, being the pre-stretch motor controller, is receiving the carriage load height, also called auto height photo eye, on terminal 5. It is receiving the carriage gate prox signal on terminal 6 and the reinforced wrap signal switch on terminal 8. For the carriage up and down motor, which is VFD2, it's receiving carriage stop and slow limit switches on terminal 5 and 6. It is also receiving the carriage lower and raise command switch on terminal 7 and 8. Finally, on VFD3, the rotation motor is receiving the bump of fertile wire signal on terminal 5 and the rotation pulse count signal on terminal 6. The home position proc sensor and the rotation jog command are wired to terminal 7 and 8. Okay, here's a review presented a little differently. On VFD3, starting from the right, you have rotary arm bumper, rotation position pulse count, rotation home position, and rotation jog switch. On VFD2, you have a carriage stop and slow limit switches, followed by the carriage jog down and the carriage jog up switches. And to finish with VFD1, you have Auto height, photo eye, carriage gate prox, nothing on terminal seven, and reinforced wrap switch. Now that you know how to use the display parameter B014 for an efficient troubleshooting of your digital inputs, let's add another layer. You can also use the display parameter D360 in order to show a percentage of 10 volt received on terminal 13. So that means your speed reference signals can also be monitored. In other words, look at it as you play with your pot and you should see a smooth variation to confirm the circuit integrity. Now for VFD1, the uh, pre-stretched VFD, this one's a little different. It will actually display the analog sensor signal strength and percentage. All right, so this is it for today. I hope this episode was useful. Please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions you may have. Thanks for watching and have a great day.